Hello everybody, welcome back, it's Jordan here. We're gonna be working on the Lego City today. In particular, the roads. I hope to finish them all today. Before we get started with that, I'm gonna show you guys how to create a curved road mill plate. The first thing that you're gonna need is a 32 by 32 base plate in any color. I know, I'm using reddish brown, crazy, hey? In addition to that, you're gonna need these three components here which can be found in the road plate packs. So you're gonna tile all three of these components together using your two x four tiles. You're gonna fill in your two x four tile spots. And then along the side here, you're gonna put some one x four tiles. However, you're gonna put two one x four plates in the corner just like that there. So you're gonna flip this thing over and you're gonna add a bunch of plate underneath it. Two by, one by, whatever it may be. You can add as much as you want, really. I just like to make sure that all the corners have support and all the seams have the support as well. And there's just some middle support as well because this is gonna lift our road plate off the base plate by one plate, which is essential when creating Mills Roads. So now we're gonna press our road plate down onto the base plate and it's gonna be lined up with the edge on either side, leaving an eight by eight square here and then an eight by a row sort of going around the edge of the road. Now we have to create these four mini builds here. These two are the same and these are actually 14 studs long. There is a row of dark gray brick then a row of white plate, and then a tile top in dark gray. And you can see I've actually left two studs exposed on the end of the 14 studs, and we have attached a one by two Technic brick to a one by two plate. And there's that one by two plate right there. So yeah, the Technic holes and the Technic brick just sort of line up with the studs. Now, some people classify that as an illegal building technique. Uh, I don't, I think we're okay. I don't think any Legos getting damaged there. So these are what I call road extensions because they're sort of extending our road. You can see I've clipped one down in spot right there and I'm gonna clip the other one in spot just right there. You can see it lines up with that tile there and there's our two exposed white studs. So now we need to try and extend our road in this little eight by eight square right here. It's a little tricky, but once you do it a few times, you sort of get the hang of it. So you have to create two road extensions. You can see this one here is six studs long. So it's got six studs of brick and then on top of that, you have some white plate, which is five studs, and then a one by one dark gray plate, and on top of that, a one by one white tile, and then we have a one by two tile in dark gray, and then once again, that one by two plate and the little Technic bit, and then a one by one tile on the end there. So now we're able to attach this in spot where it needs to go, which is just right there. They look like tricky little levels, and I think what makes them tricky is the fact that you're working in odd numbers. Whenever you work in odd numbers, it makes it hard. So this is eight studs long, but you can see there are five studs of white plate and three studs of dark bluish gray plate. And then up top there, you have a one by two uh, dark gray tile, a one by one white tile, a one by two <laughs> dark gray tile, and then once again, the one by two plate with the Technic brick holding it in spot and then a one by one dark gray tile. And that's just gonna go like that there. And you can see, because we offset these tiles right here, it sort of creates that curved line effect. So now everything involving the road portion is done. Now we actually just need to work on the sidewalk and our curve that's built into that sidewalk. Okay, so the next thing that I like to do is actually build these. Uh, we've got two of these that's a one by two plates, two of them, and then a one by two tile on top. So that's officially one brick tall, and that's gonna match the height of your road. And we actually have to plug those in right there, and then right there. And then I'm gonna take sort of the same build, but this time two by two plate and two by two tile, and we're gonna put that in right here against the road. The reason we do that is because when we build our sidewalk, these are actually exposed. So rather than having an exposed color, I like to have the dark gray so that it looks like road. Now we're gonna start creating our curve. And these are the parts that you need to do that. So you need seven of the three long angle plates in both directions. And then you need one of each of the four long angle plates in both directions. So you can see we've got them all laid out there and you can see they're actually double stacked. So there's three stacks of each, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then the final one, you're gonna use the three long one and the four long one 
like that on top of one another. Then you need this two by two triangular plate as well. So this is where you're gonna need some brick. Two by two, two by three, two by four, whatever it may be. I'm using two by three because that's what I have right now. And you're gonna to wanna to place your first angle plate so that it's one stud past that tile. You see that alignment there? So you just put your bricks down just like that there and get your first one laid. And of course you can do that on either side. Now you're gonna to wanna to put a brick right up against that one by two plate slash one by two tile insert that you put right there. So now you can take your next angle and sort of line it up with the triangular part of that. So now you're starting to create a curve and it's held in by that stud right there. And then just sort of start working your way down, lining up all your triangular plates just like that there. And of course you can do that on either side. So I'm gonna take another two by three brick, I'm gonna put it there and I'm gonna put it just like that there. Now we have these studs here that we can work with on the next one, which is super cool. So now we're gonna take that odd one and we can actually put it there and there. But this little triangular plate that we have is actually gonna slide just underneath there. So here we go. Just like that there, locks that little triangular plate in place there. And now we sort of have a curve developing here. And also now you can visualize why we laid that tile there on the one by two plates. See how it's exposed when I lay this down? It's exposed right there. So we wanna just fill that in so that it's not an eyesore, right? It just wants to blend in with that road. So you can really fill this in however you want. Just the most important thing is that these studs right here, there's actually nine studs, is gray because you're gonna be able to see that when you tile over it. So you want that to be gray. So you could use a one by plate there. You could use two by plate in gray, whatever sort of gray you have. You could even use, you know, big ones if you have enough of them and you want to sacrifice all your big plates. You can fill it in just like that there. But you can also just like make it very colorful. Use all your garbage colorful plates in here, whatever you want, right? For this example, I've decided to use a six wide gray plate there, which I cherish. You know, I could have just used a two by plate or a one by plate, probably a two by plate because I want to work in even numbers. Just put a two by plate there like I did here and then make this all colorful. But now you can essentially fill this all in using two by two bricks as your support and plate on the top in any color that you want. Now our very colorful sidewalk is ready to be tiled, so that's good, but we still gotta create this sidewalk here. I've put two one by two bricks in there so it can support this curved plate right here. I want this curve in there just so we can see the lines and it gives us that nice rounded interior curve, which is good. And now when we fill this in, we still gotta make sure the light gray is visible on the edge of the road. So I usually use two by threes because that's what I have a lot of. There's not really a right or wrong way of filling that all in. You can use any combination that you want, just as long as that light gray is exposed on the road. That's just the most important thing, but use any combination of plates, bricks, whatever you got there to fill that in, you know? Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna place these curved tiles right there just because they look pretty fresh, I like that. And now we're ready to start tiling. But the first thing we're gonna do is take this little uh, corner plate and put it right in there and fill that gap in nicely. So it's just floating there, perfect. And now that that's all done, we're ready to start tiling. Now when you're done tiling that with your two by two tiles, you are gonna be left over with some awkward spaces. Essentially fill those in however you like. I mean, you could use a one by two there and a one by three, or you could use one by ones and then one by fours and one by threes there. And I'm gonna go with the one by threes right there, one by fours right there, and do that the same on either side. So there we go, everybody, look at that. We've got a nice curved plate. Looks good, hey? <laughs> a lot of parts go into creating that, hey? It's wild. Obviously these are open here because we're gonna tile our road plates together. I don't go with the Technic pins. That's why I didn't put the Technic uh, bricks in there, like these ones here. That's another thing you could do is just put the Technic bricks in the corners and pin all your roads together. But I just use tiles. I just find them a little bit easier and easier to move around and link together, sort of more like exposed. Also, it removes those lines because when they're connected, you know, rather than having two one by four tiles side by side, I just prefer 
the two by four tile locking it all together. And there's other things that you could do here. Uh, I mean, you could add, you know, bushes and stuff on your sidewalks. You could also add jumpers to your sidewalks. You can place your minifigures and stuff like that. This is a pretty nice looking curve there, I think. Uh, there is no white lines in the middle. There are ways of doing that, but I just think it looks better, just cleaner like that there. So let's place this in the city and have a look at the other ones that we need to complete today. It is optional. You can use the crosswalk ones or you can use the ones without the print. For example, right here where we have two curves side by side, that looks sort of strange. So it's unfortunate they don't include the ones without the print in the road plate packs. So now that we know how to build curves, it's time to start our next project, which is completing more roads here in the Lego city. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, you can see there's a bunch of stuff that needs to be completed and a bunch of curves over there that we got to build just behind the boutique hotel. And then just some other stuff here in the city that needs to be worked on. Like these roads just need to be completed. And then once we get that stuff done, I can feel comfortable moving on to the next project. It's just sort of an eyesore having these things not 100% complete. So I'm excited to continue working on that project here today in this video. So when making a lot of roads all at once, I like to do it in stages and sort of create an assembly line process. So you can see I've actually built some of the road extensions right here. And you can see I've got a bunch of them ready to go for some curves. So those are our eight long extensions and our six long extensions that pair up to create the corner. I'm assuming you remember that, right? Yeah, these things right here. So we have to build those eight long and six long extensions whenever we're doing any corners. That's for the curve roads or the four way intersects and the T intersects as well. So it's definitely quicker building multiple of those at one time. And then you saw that we have to build more curves. So I got more of these 14 stud long panels that go on the side there. And then I have to build some straights as well. So I have uh, just some 32 stud long ones here. That'll be our road extensions. And then there's one unique one over there that requires a 24 stud road extension. So I've pre-built all of these things here just to make our lives easier while road building. Now I was super excited because my shipment of two by two gray tile actually was released from the Lego group the other day. So I was pretty excited about that. We have a thousand of the two by two gray tiles on the way. Now these park plates that I built a long time ago don't really have a home in the Lego city. So I'm gonna do something that I really don't wanna do, but I'm actually gonna take all of these two by two tiles from these park plates, and I'm gonna use them on the road that we're gonna be building today, just so that we have more tiles for the roads and they look more complete. So I really don't wanna do this, but I guess I'm gonna to have to tear apart all of these park plates. Something that I'm super excited about is the fact that our large shipment of gray tiles arrived during the production of this video. All 999 of them. Woo! These are the roads that we finished building today here. I thought this one was pretty cool. This is the 24 stud sidewalk here. It's got the train track built into it and then it's a curve. And this one here is also really neat. Once again, a curve, sort of like what we learned to build today, but it's modified with the train track. Then we've got our two curves here. I did run out of those angle plates, so I actually had to salvage them. So I'll have to order some more of those. And then there's some T intersects right here as well. So it's good to get those all finished up. Let's place them in the Lego city. I'm actually so hyped on that. It's gonna look so good. In addition to placing those roads, I'm also tiling off the remaining roads. That's all the tiles I've left from all 999 of them that just arrived and also all of the tiles from those park plates. And I've decided to build some more mills plates using these 16 by 16 plates that I had. I ordered 170 of these. I'm about to use the remainder of them right now. <laughs> Crazy, hey? So we ended up getting all of our roads done and we changed a bunch of the existing ones as well to better suit the layout. We used all of the two by two tiles that we received and uh, we actually built some mills plates as well. So we got a little bit more done today than I thought we would have, which is good. The roads on Pop Culture Street were already looking pretty good, so not much has changed here, but we've got some modified curves and stuff like that that look pretty fantastic. A nice T intersect there that leads all the way down there toward the Quickie Mart and the Simpsons House. Come around the corner here by the corner garage. Nice clean street coming down there toward the police station and also the brick bank. Now there are some things that we need to do in regards to details. Just didn't get a chance to do that today. I always do those details last. That includes 
uh, minifigures, street lamps, trees, and bushes. Just obviously those things get in the way as you're moving things around, so it's smart to do those last. I was able to tile off this section of sidewalk right here beside the Palace Cinema and the Grand Emporium as well, and that connects to the beach. Finished up with all the roads over here in the residential area as well. I'm digging the new residential area. It's looking pretty cool. I like how the pop culture related residential buildings such as the McAllister's House, Simpsons House, and Quickie Mart, uh, Fort Privet Drive, that are on the end of Pop Culture Street. I think that looks pretty good. Now I am planning on making some changes over here. I think I'm gonna remove one of these platforms. So this is a series of platforms. You can see one goes from here to there. I think that one's gonna be gone and I'm gonna be able to slide the roller coaster back and give a little bit more space to the amusement park over here. It is a little bit hard to reach that far corner there and it's just sort of awkward how there is uh, the platform over there. So I think I'm gonna remove one of those eventually there and that's gonna give us a little bit more space hopefully for Fort Privet Drive somewhere in this area as well where we might move that to the campground. Now there is some stuff that I do need to modify and that's the exposed colorful plates and bricks on our road plates around the edging. So I do need to modify that still. And the way you do that is you just add some light gray bricks, sort of like what we've done right here. So I need to change that with our roads and also with some of our modular buildings as well, as you can see some exposed brick. Really dig what I did with the Quickie Mart. I love its new location over here, it's fantastic. This sort of mills plate really does accommodate it quite well. And I need to do the same thing with the Simpsons house and same with the McAllister's house. Got to give them their own driveway and they actually have four base plates each in their new location. So we're going to be able to do something with those pretty quickly here. That's going to look pretty fantastic. And like I was saying, still got to add all those details, right? Uh, trees and bushes, minifigures, uh, lab posts and stuff like that all in the main downtown core over here. Also, you'll notice that the streets are pretty empty. I do have some more vehicles, so we're going to have to distribute those throughout the city as well. Uh, yeah, this looks really good though. Our train tracks built right into the road and transfers into this tunnel. That's something else that I have to do is work on these platform coverings. So I'm hoping once we remove that over there, that platform, then I'll be able to work on these platform coverings and get this looking a little more consistent and finish that up. But yeah, the roads look fantastic over here. Oh, this one needs to slide over a bit. Boom. <laughs> That's another thing I need to work on is actually the alignment of everything. You will see that there's a little bit of gap between our buildings in some places. So what I need to do is actually start in the far corner and just sort of lock everything together and then slowly but surely make our way over here, just making sure that everything is square and locked together. But those road plates definitely add a nice touch. We actually finished up all the tiling over here in front of Town Square as well. And by the beach there, we did add some new mills plates right there underneath the little toy store and also the uh, noodle shop as well. Just by adding those mills plates, we were definitely able to improve the look of the city a lot. In fact, we did the same thing right over here on Pop Culture Street. So you can see this is where we're gonna put that bowling alley, if and when it ever ships. I hope to put it there. I think it'll sort of match the vibe of Pop Culture Street. Not sure if it's gonna work as a corner building. I haven't had a look at it in a while, but I'm pretty sure it will. And we still have all the parts to uh, increase the size of our daily bugle. So we're gonna be adding a little bit of depth to it, also a little bit of width and probably another floor as well. So once we get that done, that'll look pretty good there. Just slowly but surely chipping away at things here in the LIGO city. Really glad that we were able to get the roads done today. I think that was just important to get done before we start moving on to other projects. Specifically, really like the mills plates over here, once again, for that toy store and also the noodle shop, which are uh, gonna be eventually mills plated onto half base plates themselves. And then over here, we added some more mills plates as well. This used to be green plate at regular height. So I'm glad that we were able to switch that up and had the parts to do that because that just looks so much better. Even if it's just temporary and not done, it looks so much better. Convert this into a modular building and it'll have its own 16 by 32 base plate, probably right here on the corner, some sort of diner or shrimp shack, right? I think that'll look really cool. Just right there before the boatyard. Now we modified all this as well. This took quite some time. This actually used to be parking stalls here like this, but I had to change it so that it connected right here. And this is a custom road plate. You can see these extensions are 24 long and then they have what we did on the corners there. You see that? And then I had to build two of those because this is actually between two base plates. And then I had to re-render a bunch of the road here so that I could accommodate these gravel road entrances to the 
uh, campground. Something that I have to do actually now that I look at it is remove this white line just by replacing the white plate with dark gray plate so that these entrances are a little more seamless. And you can see what I mean about the alignment. So we have to start in the far corner <laughs> and get everything aligned. As you can imagine, that's probably gonna be a pretty big job for me. Uh, over here, we're gonna have some sort of entrance to the zoo. So that's gonna be looking pretty cool. I had to flip this around the other way. So once again, I gotta fix up all of this here and make that all gray. We've got a bunch of base plates that are open here. And honestly, just a bunch of work to do in general. But I'm definitely liking the direction that the LEGO City is currently heading. And I think this is some big progress that we made here today. So yeah, we got lots of stuff done in the LEGO City today. All the roads are officially built and placed. That's awesome. Also, just by adding a few mills plates here and there, it really did improve the look of the LEGO City, I feel, which is fantastic. We learned how to build a curved road. And as you saw when we went over that, lots of parts go into creating mills roads. It's actually insane. Like I can't even fathom how many parts I actually put into creating this mills plated city and also lots of time as well. It takes a lot of time to develop these roads. As you can imagine, there is lots of roads that I had to build over the last, what was it? Six, eight months. Yeah. So it's been a journey converting the entire city to mills, especially in its new larger layout. Lots of budget has gone into it, lots of planning, and also lots of time. I mean, it doesn't take that long to build, you know, one road, but when you got to build a hundred of them, it becomes a little bit monotonous and takes uh, quite a bit of time. But I've stayed motivated throughout the entire journey, and I'm really excited to continue developing the LEGO City. Let us know what you think by commenting below. Remember, like, subscribe, and stay tuned. Thank you so much for popping on by. Farewell.